Harry Gisborne was an intensely inquisitive man. He was also practical, disciplined, demanding, and dedicated to the Forest Service, spending a season as a fire lookout while getting his degree in forestry from the University of Michigan. He went directly into the Forest Service from Michigan, then took off two years for World War I, and from then on, it was all Forest Service. He went to the Northwest, where the Priest River Forest Experiment Station had asked for him to be involved in fire research. On April 1st, 1922, Gisborne arrived there with a new title, a raise, and a lifetime's worth of innovation before him. His work was in three main areas, measuring and forecasting fire conditions, lightning and fires, and statistical rainfall forecasting. Moisture content of fuels was a key piece of information in this process, and Giz started at the bottom, determining the levels in duff, the detritus that covers the forest floor. Working with Matthew Dunlap, they devised a duff hygrometer for field measurements. That was the standard for 20 years. He then moved up the fuel ladder, coming up with a system that eventually settled on four half-inch dowels to log the moisture of sapling-sized material. In 1925, he got an assistant, which freed him to spend more time in the field observing fires, his favorite mode of data gathering. Giz's method was quite direct. Getting inside the fire and as close to the main front as possible, and then measuring everything I can, including the weather elements and spread of the fire, according to timber type, slope, and kind, size, amount, and arrangement of fuels. During the same time, he was collecting 1,300 lightning reports from 146 stations and began sending the punch card data to a very early data processor in the Washington office. By 1929, these numbers had grown to 15,000 storm observations from 344 stations, and the results led to improved protection from strike fires. But Giz told all concerned that the time frame was too short and that more data were required. He did some looking into rainfall as well, coming up with a system to forecast a wetter or drier spring and summer based on a 14-year record. It was 86% accurate. During the 1930s, Giz and his men developed eight low-cost, locally made, weather-related instruments. Drawing on data from all three of his research areas, he came up with the fire danger meter in 1932. Based on a photographer's exposure meter, it represented everything he learned about fire to date, along with the input of six rangers on what they thought the resultant fire danger was from a combination of assembled data. He did his own assessment and then harmonized the results with theirs for the final scale. This was the first of its kind, and its worth was proved by the Selway Fire of 1934. Working with two GE scientists on lightning studies in 1947, the men made the chance discovery of cloud seeding. Giz seized on this at once as a potentially powerful tool in the firefighting arsenal. In the same year, he went to Washington, D.C. to receive the USDA's Superior Service Award for his 25 years of accomplishments. So one time he came back down off of that tower and there was Charlie Tebby, his station director and boss, standing there waiting for him. And uh, Charlie Tebby said, Giz, I hate to tell you this, but you just can't do this anymore. We just can't allow it. It's just, it's just criminal. So Giz reached up to his lapel, took off his Forest Service badge, started to hand it to Charlie Tebby and said, OK. You can take this, I'm leaving. Well, Charlie Tebby back down. For most of the 30s, Giz worked with a man cut from the same cloth, Lloyd Hornby. When he died of a heart attack in the field, Giz said of his dying, as he would have probably chosen with his boots on, in the field, actually on the fire line. Harry Gisborne died of a heart attack, with his boots on, in the field, investigating the Man Gulch fire in November of 1949. His ashes rest in the old man's eye at the spot he marked 
in the Mission Range, 150 miles southeast of Mount Gisborne.